I thought I would do an introductory video to the Eden Editor, which, uh, to my mind, is one of the best parts about Arma, if not the best part about Arma. And I know that many people share that opinion once you really learn this game. So we are going to start by clicking on the Editor box. Your first choice is what map you want to start on. Now, that's assuming you're creating a new scenario, which is what we're doing today. So. I'm going to start with Stratus, which is, I believe, the smallest island. I like it. It's a, uh, and I like that airfield that sticks out on the west coast. I enjoy that. So we'll just start with Stratus and, and go into the editor. Uh, a little background. Um, Arma 3 came out in 2013, and it had an editor. It was mostly... It was primarily, a, well, it was only a, two, a 2D editor. In other words, it was uh, top-down looking at a map, just like the one you're looking at right now. And everything was done uh, in that format on the map. So you would come over and uh, get yourself a grenadier and drop them on the map. And uh, that's that's all you could tell about where your grenadier was and you know, it, so it was okay, but it was pretty hard to to carefully place units that way. So when they came out with a new uh, editor, and I believe it was 2016, the Eden editor, they called it, came out. They also added a 2D map. So um, you not only had the ability to go, you know, to look top down, at the map, but you could click your right, click your mouse wheel, and it, you get a symbol of a camera. And then if you push M as in mic, just like you do when you're playing the game, to shift between map and uh, the 3D world, you do the same thing here. And now you can edit your scenarios in 3D, uh, which is much better and what most people do most of the time. So we're going to do a little bit of that. The problem with 2D is it's very hard to place units accurately. You can end up uh, sitting a tank on the map and when you get into the scenario you find out that one of the tank's treads is on top of some big rock and the tank explodes as soon as the scenario begins. You have a lot of problems like that. So with the 2D editor or, I'm sorry, with the 3D editor, you can shift back and forth. You can look at where you place the item in three dimensions and make sure that everything is, is okay. All right, so let's, so the, the map and the 3D interface is essentially the centerpiece of the whole editor. So once again, you push the M as in mic key to shift between the two, the 2D map and the 3D map. There are three other sections to the editor. On the left is all the entities. There's also one for locations, but I never really use that. It shows all the locations for... Um, so if I double click on those, it'll take me instantly to anywhere on the island. You know, the major, inter, you know, Stratus Air Base, or Camino firing range. So it's a great way to hop around if you need to do it like that. It takes you to all the key... Uh, key places. I suppose it would do the same thing in 3D. And yes, it does. Oh, what it does, it just moves the camera. Okay. There we are. Uh, so we're going to go back to Stratus Air Base, which is where we were. Now, while you're in the 2D map, uh, by the way, you can look around by holding down the right mouse button uh, you know, up, down, right, left. To move forward, you use WASD. So you move W to go forward, just like when you walk in a mission. It has to go backwards, D to go to the right, and uh, A to go left. And then the only other two keys you need to know about is Q. Takes you up, increases elevation, and Z brings you all the way down. So you know, if you want to place an airplane in this hangar here, you can get right down to ground level 
uh, and so you can see exactly what you're doing. And you need to do that when you're trying to do that sort of thing where you're placing aircraft or people inside a building, etc. Okay, so that's enough of the map. Anyway, that, so the left side is locations and it's entities. And what entities is, is that every time I put an object on the map, a soldier, a squad, a tank, anything, uh, modules, which are programmable objects, um, you know, uh, structures, it all shows up here on the left. So this is essentially a record of what you have on your map for your scenario. Okay. Um, up on top, we're not going to talk too much about that today. A lot of it's fairly obvious. You have your typical uh, symbols like uh, opening a file. Uh, if I wanted to open an existing scenario, I could click on that. I could go to my multiplayer missions and pick one out of there. Or my so you you have two folders. One is for missions, which is the intent for the intent is that your single player missions will go in there and the MP is multiplayer missions. There's really no difference between the two as far as the program is concerned. You can you can put any, you can put a multiplayer mission under the missions folder, it doesn't really matter. It's it's there to help you stay organized so you know which ones are multiplayer and which ones are not multiplayer. That's all it's for. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So anyway, we'll cancel that. We're not going to open a new mission. Um, so the, the top is mostly that sort of thing. And we will get into that in a later video. Um, I don't want to get into that. A couple things right over here are ha happy, uh, handy to understand. One is Intel. That has your weather, time of day, date, and everything. So if you want to make your mission a night mission, if you want to do a night mission, that's where you change the time. Uh, you can play with the weather if you want. Um, normally when I'm editing, I like to keep it in daylight. It's much easier to see what you're doing. Uh, and I only go to nighttime when I want to try out the mission or, you know, see what things look like or what they're going to look like. This map is the same as toggle map. It's the same as using the M key. Toggles you between 3D and 2D. Uh, the flashlight is if you are working on a night mission. You can toggle flashlight and it and so you can edit things and still see them adequately even though it's dark. Like I said, I just shift it over to daytime while I'm working, but either way. And toggle vision mode, you can also use night vision. So if you're editing a, a, a scene or you want to see what it looks like it, at night, with night vision on, you can do that too. And that's pretty much those guys. Okay. Um, so that's that. Let's uh, toggle that off. And I'm going to go back to daylight. And then the last major part of the editor is over here on the right. And that is basically what I, what I like to call the toy box. This is where you get all of the things to put on the map for your scenario. So let me give you some for instances. Right now, this F1 is a singular object, right? These are single objects. So squads would not be under this category. Um, we're not looking for multiple objects. We're just looking for single objects. So if I get, if I'm gonna put a helicopter down, um, it's gonna be a single object, see? Just one helicopter. If uh, I put down an infantry unit, it's just one soldier, okay, um, etc. So there's a lot of things under this category. I mean, an enormous amount of stuff. Um, more than you'll probably ever use. Another thing that comes under single objects is over here. This is props, it's called. Now, you see these colors, you have single objects, but you have different colors up here. Blue is for blue force, which is the good guys. Red is for op four or the bad guys. Green is for independent. There are several independent factions. 
the AAF, the FIA, the LDF, the looters, and the syndicate. And then there are also civilians. So there's the uh, civilians and the IDAP, which I guess is civilian organizations. <clears throat> and those can be aligned different ways. Like usually the independents, some will be aligned with the blue force, some with the with the red force. And then all the way on the right here, this strange looking symbol is for props. So th this is a pretty cool thing if you're building a scenario because you can, let's say you're, we're on uh, Stratus. It doesn't have, I guess, structures. No. Altus, Livonia, Tanoa. That's interesting. Well, we'll borrow some here. So let's say I want to go down under structures to uh, military you'll be using a lot. And, and here, you know, here you go. Here's a barracks. You want a barracks in your scenario? There it is. Okay. Uh, you want to throw a bunker in? You can throw a bunker in there. Um, you can use uh, camouflage netting to put over something. However, I'd be careful with that. My experience is if you put that over something, like an anti-aircraft gun or an artillery piece, it won't function properly. So I would just use that for window dressing if I were you. Uh, you know, there's endless things. There's tents, and uh, there's just no end. And this is just this is just the military part, right? So, um, you know, you can spend forever putting this stuff down. It's a lot of fun, though. It adds a lot of realism to your scenarios. So I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, I could just click on these one at a time. I'm going to go into the map view. Here's a good thing, a good reason to have the map view, because you can see the overall placement from above. And if you want to select a bunch of items, you can make a box, select them all at once, and hit the delete key, and they're gone. Now, another way to do that, I just went Control-Z to bring them all back, is I could do the same thing over here. I could go select all these items uh, over here using the Shift key. No, that isn't going to work. Hit the delete key. All the units are gone. Do the same thing under uh, structures. Empty. Hit the delete key. Now they're all gone. So anyway, you get the idea. So that's really basically it. So uh, let's design a very quick scenario here. Um, let's come down here. You know, you can do this all day long. Throw an airplane down, go fly around. You can put empty aircraft, empty objects, or objects with crews. Uh, that That is one good point we'll talk about very quickly here, and that is that if you look down here at the, at the bottom of the right column, it says place vehicles with crew. So that means that, and that's the default. So if I throw a tank down, on the runway here, that tank is already manned. It's got a driver, a gunner, and a commander. Now, if I uncheck that box, and there are times you will want to do that, if I uncheck that box and I throw a tank down, it's the same tank, but it's empty. There's nobody in it. And the difference is now I can get in that tank, drive it around all I want, play with it, have fun, uh, and the other difference is, I think if it's if it's empty, the AI knows. And like, like um, uh, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So if I put a if I put a op four tank, you know, 30 meters away, and I'm gonna aim it towards the other tank. I don't think it'll shoot at it. Let's see if I'm right. All right, so how am I going to, now how do I go into the scenario? So right now we are playing single player mode. And normally when I'm editing, that's where I leave it. You don't really need to go into multiplayer mode. And we'll, we'll deal with that in another lesson. But we are in single player mode. So um, I'm going to, I'll just, I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll be a I'll be an op four soldier since 
I don't want this tank to blow me up if I was a blue four. So I'm going to go get a, a rifleman or something here. And I'm going to throw him down over here just to observe. Okay. And what I expect is going to happen is this tank is going to do nothing. Because this tank is empty. Let's see if I'm right. So here we go. We're entering single player mode. And uh, actually, I'm going to right click on this little unit here to make sure, because I want to play as that character. So I'm going to go play as character. So now we are going uh, into Arma World. And here I am standing next to the runway. There's the tanks. Now notice the CSAT tank, which is manned and staring right at that Angora tank, is doing nothing. Because it knows it's empty, it doesn't pay any attention to it at all. All right, so let's go back to the editor now. And we're going to get rid of this guy. And I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a blue force guy. I'm going to point this tank the other way. Watch this. Now I'm going to put a, I'm going to put a blue force soldier. Doesn't matter who behind this tank. And I'm going to play, do a right click and play as character. And now it's, it's letting me get in the back of the tank. Well, I can do that because I can probably go to, let's go in there. And I think a lot of people don't know that, but there are, you can carry uh, six people in one of these tanks, almost a full squad. That's pretty impressive. Uh, although, it looks like you're sitting on the floor. I guess you are. I'm going to see if I can go. Yep, I'm going to go to the gunner's seat. And now I'm going to I'm going to pee in this guy's cornflakes. And he's now he knows. Now he's going to turn around, I would think. I guess he's dumber than I thought. So, um, let's try some co -ops. That's impressive. Okay, well, so much for my demonstration. I thought I put someone in that tank. Maybe let's let's get out of here and make sure there's somebody in there. Let's go back into the Eden editor. Nope, that's an empty tank. That's why he's not doing anything. I see I forgot to recheck the box when I put him down. So we're going to go back to the tank. And we'll put the T-140 here. Well, now I have to try my experiment all over again because... Um, I'll put him over here. Maybe Maybe the tank won't see me. Let's hope not. All right. Uh, I'm going to play as this Blue Force guy. I hope that tank doesn't see me here. I'm toast. Oh, here he is. Now remember, the Blue the the Blue Force tank is empty. Yeah. There's definitely somebody in that tank now. All right, so to finish my sample here, and I won't waste any more of your time, I'm going to delete this guy and put a Blue Force tank with a crew in it in the same spot. Notice 
that the box around it is blue. It's got this tag, which means that there's a unit inside with people. That tag would not be there if it was an empty vehicle. Okay. That should have been my tip off that there was nobody in that op four tank. So you notice how red and blue, right? When it's just an empty vehicle, there is no colored box around it. It's just yellow. Okay, so now we're going to go, I'm going to play as the gunner in here. And let's see what happens. Let's see who, who blows up who first. Enemy! Tank. The tank. 100 meters, just up ahead! I think I messed up. Uh-oh. Oh, we're in trouble now. I think he's missing us. Our Critical damage. We gotta get out of here. I'm, hit. Oh, I'm out of here. Scudder, get in that vehicle! I'm hit! We got a man down! Shit, we've got a man. And that concludes this lesson. Uh, have a great evening.